All right, kids, Golf Coach Dan, we are back. I think I have a good one for you today. Let's find out. Today's video is going to be a guide, a three-step simple guide on how to draw the golf ball. For me as a right-handed golfer, that's curving it from right to left. That would be the opposite of a slice. So this is gonna be three easy steps to drawing the golf ball or at the very least, stop slicing the golf ball, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is to keep things simple for us, I'm gonna use right versus left terminology. Now I apologize to the lefties, just flip it around, okay? You're used to that by now. So let's get into it, not waste any more time. Three easy steps to drawing the golf ball. The first step is gonna be handling what we do from setup to the end of the takeaway, which is about here, when the shaft is parallel to the ground in the backswing, okay? The key, very simply, is to limit how much the club face rolls open. So this would be the club face pointing more down to the ground. That's what we're looking for. I think a lot of us would agree these days that if your leading edge was like parallel to your spine, that's square. If it's more to the ground, that's closed. If it's upper, you know, that's crazy open, right? We don't want any of that. So the more that face stays pointing to the ground through the takeaway, that means the less the club face is opening and then the less you'll have to work to close it to create the effect you're looking for through impact, okay? so. How can we make sure that the face is staying more pointed to the ground and not rolling too open? I think there's two simple ways, or you could actually combine them a little bit if you want as well. Step one would be strengthening the grip orientation, right? I just posted a video like a day or two ago about a guide to grip. So if you're more curious about how you're going to strengthen grip orientation, go there. Okay, that would be step one. Uh, step two potentially would be to add what we call flexion and extension to the wrist. Your more old school terminology would be bowing the lead wrist cupping the trail wrist, right? When we do that, we can sort of create this hinge or setting motion of the wrists while keeping the face more to the ground. One last point I'll make here. I heard an analogy not that long ago I really liked. If the club face was a mirror, you're simply looking to keep the ball's reflection in that mirror for as long as possible. So again, stronger grip, flexed extended wrists, maybe option C is the combo of both. That will keep our club face more pointing to the ground at the end of the takeaway and that would be a successful step one. Check. On to step two. That's gonna be the second half of our back thing, what we're doing to create a certain position at the top. And that certain position we want at the top should contain copious amounts of backswing depth. Let me explain. So I want a golfer to make a nice full turn. So we want you doing that if you're not already doing that, right? Change the flex of your knees. You should get a lot of weight into the right heel, lefties trail, maybe your left heel, right? Not maybe, it's your left heel if you're a lefty. Okay. Change the flex of the knees. Weight goes into that back right heel. That's gonna help me turn my hips. My hips turning will help my shoulders turn, and that will help my arms swing. And that should get a lot of it done for you, but if you make a massive turn and your hands go straight up, that won't create any depth, right? So we need sometimes a flatter left arm, lead arm, with the hands more behind us. If I were to draw a line straight down from the handle at the top of the backswing, I'd want that line to hit at least the ankle joint maybe the heel or even behind it. The more behind it you get, the deeper you are and the easier it is to swing inside out to the point where it could become too much, right? A lot of us want that shallow downswing, but I think not enough of people appreciate that tons of trouble can come from way under the plane, the same way you know trouble can come from over the plane. We just see over the plane much more. All right, cool. So two steps so far. We're looking to keep the club face more closed through the takeaway. And then from takeaway to top of the backswing, we're looking to create lots of depth to that position, right? So this is a big turn with high hands. This is a big turn with deep hands. We want those deep hands to get more from inside out to hit that draw or not slice the ball. Those are the first few steps. Step three has something to do with our follow through, right? Now what I wanna see is sort of the trail arm roll over the lead arm, but in my opinion, the lead arm almost has to allow for that so let's talk about releasing the club the right way. I always am talking to people about using your left hand or lead hand and rolling that to the sky. Supination, if you wanna get technical with it. You wanna supinate the lead hand. If you're my target, the camera here, that's gonna have my thumb spinning kind of back to the left of it, right? Outside it. This would be the opposite of that. Notice how the entire anatomy of that arm shifts. Here's the chicken wing, and that's the release that we like, right? So when the elbow is high, the thumb will be down, too much space here, and guess what? That club face, if you can see it facing you, is open, right? But now if I just take this whole arm and twist it, look how much that club face closed, right? So we wanna let that left palm roll to the sky, 
let the right hand just roll over top of it. This is a release that you want to look for if you are slicing the ball or want to hit a bigger draw, right? Where so many golfers I see, their backswings are surprisingly good. I'm probably too extended. Their backswings are surprisingly good, but they just never release the club and they chicken wing it through, holds the face open. All right, so step one, keep the face more closed in the takeaway. Step two, build some depth to the top of the backswing. Step three, release the club. If you exaggerate all of them, you might end up hooking the ball, depending on where you are currently on the face to path spectrum, all right? Haven't hit many balls yet this morning, but let me just test this out for you. I'm gonna do a couple of these. Actually, I'll tell you what, let me demo a nice way for you to train it. We'll call it a freezer drill or like a checkpoint freezer drill. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna rehearse this myself so I don't embarrass myself on video. We're gonna go face down and take away, check. Deep hands to the top, check, and then just try to release it as much as I can through the ball. At the very least here, if it's not pretty, it's going to curve right to left, I tell you that much. Ready? So face down, check, deep hands, check, and release it. And I think I topped that for you guys. I'm really sorry. Let me give you one more. Bounce that in my posture. Here we go. Ah, curve. It hooked left. One more for you. Face down, deep hands, and release. And I probably should have stretched before making this video, but two for two, that one was a lot better. Two for two, draws, okay? So, face down, deep hands, release the club, hit your draw at the very least. You will not be slicing it as much anymore. If you found this helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and I'll see you next time.